anything that's uh, painful to think about or seems like it's going to be painful to think about triggers uh, a defensive reaction and many of us we want to push it away psychologists sometimes call that denial in Tennessee there's an old saying uh, if you see a turtle on top of a fence post you can be pretty sure it didn't get there by itself and similarly these uh, unusually high levels of climate denial in the United States, we're the only country that has a major political party in denial on climate, uh, this didn't happen by itself. There has been an enormous amount of money spent by large carbon polluters and their ideological allies to try to create false doubt they took a page from the playbook of the tobacco companies who 50 years ago were confronted with the new medical consensus that smoking cigarettes causes lung cancer and other diseases. And they hired actors and put them in front of cameras with teleprompters. And they said, hi, I'm a doctor and you don't have to worry at all about smoking cigarettes. No adverse effects to the nose and they held off any kind of meaningful policy response for 40 years, and 100 million people died unnecessarily. The same thing is going on now, with some, not all, but some of the large carbon polluters putting out false information, hiring pseudo-scientists to pretend that uh, they have the lowdown on <laughs> the science and that the global scientific community is all wrong and the carbon polluters uh, hired hands know best. Global warming is illusory. We're actually going through a period of global cooling. Calling carbon dioxide a pollutant? Come on. <laughs> Look how much pollution I just put out. They spend enough money on it that they've been able to, to make some headway. And it's become unnecessarily partisan. It used to be bipartisan, but uh, it's become a, an election device uh, by the ultra-conservatives, but uh, they're losing. The American people are waking up to what the rest of the world has long since realized, that we've got to, to stop this climate crisis because it, it could, if not responded to, threaten the future of human civilization. And the good news is that we now have the tools that we can use to solve it. We can create tens of millions of new jobs with solar and wind and batteries and electric vehicles and efficiency improvements and all of the wonderful solutions that are now emerging. Solar jobs in the United States are now growing 17 times faster than job growth generally in the United States. And for the next 10 years, the Bureau of Labor Statistics says the single biggest occupation in the U.S. is going to be wind tower turbine technician. So there are many other examples of how we're going to be able to put tens of millions of people to work, reduce the emissions, safeguard the future, and create a better way of life.